surge to the polls, having one of their largest midterm primary election turnouts in the state in more than 16 years. But far more Republican voters showed up at the polls across the state than usual as well. Joining us now, national political correspondent for NBC News and MSNBC, Steve Kornacki. He's live at the big board and in Austin, Texas, professor at the Lyndon B. Johnson School of Public Affairs at the University of Texas, MSNBC contributor, Victoria DeFrancesco Soto. Steve, we will start with you as you're dressed in your casual <laughs> Kornacki chic, which we always like to see. It means it's been a big election night. What are your big takeaways from Texas? Yeah, let's Let's start on the issue of turnout. Look, this is sort of the first statewide primary of the 28 midterm season. A lot of questions here. Were we going to see a big surge on the Democratic side? Maybe signs of not so much energy on the Republican side. We'll look at the, you know, to the top of the ballot yesterday, the gubernatorial race statewide primary. They weren't great primaries, but you get a sense of how many ballots were cast on each side. And look, you had 1.5 million Republican ballots. That's the most in primary history in Texas. Republicans broke their own record. This Democratic number is over a million. That is up significantly from what Democrats have been getting in the past. But if you look at that gap, you know, that's about 60% of the ballots cast yesterday were Republicans. Whoa, that wasn't supposed to happen. About 60% were Republican, about 40% were Democrats. Historically, what does that mean? That puts Democrats in better shape than they were in 2014 and 2010. Those were very bad midterm years for them. Not as good shape as they were in, though, in 2006. That was a great midterm year for them. And if you go all the way back to 2002, well, 2002, Democrats actually had more ballots cast than Republicans in Texas. So that's one thing we're keeping an eye on. Another thing we're looking at here, too, is some of these congressional primaries where Democrats think they have a chance to knock off Republicans. One in particular, this is in the 7th District. This is suburban Houston. This is a Republican district. And what was so interesting about this Democratic primary, national Democrats panicked about this. Oh, that also wasn't supposed to happen. Let me try that one more time. <laughs> national Democrats. Let's see if we can get that up. This is where you start breaking stuff. There we go. <laughs> Laura Moser, National Democrats, tried to sink her campaign. They said, look, she had been living in Washington, just moved back to the state, had wrote disparaging comments about living in Texas. Well, there was a backlash to what the National Democrats tried to do. Now, look, there's runoffs in Texas. She's going to be in the runoff. If you look at the votes that were just cast yesterday on Election Day, she did much better than in the early vote. Looks like clear signs of a backlash there. So that's one to keep an eye on. Markey race, one of the closest nationally for the House. National Democrats don't like this candidate, but voters in the district may. That's something. And very quickly, of course, you got the Senate primary this fall. You're going to have O'Rourke, Cruz. 62% mm, for O'Rourke in a primary he was supposed to win very easily. That number may not be as exciting as Democrats were hoping for there. Hey, so, so Steve, it looks like reports that we've been hearing leading in, talking about registration and early voting. Democrats up 105%, Republicans up 10%. Looks like a lot of those reports about a big blue wave coming in Texas, once again, overhyped. Uh, and I say once again because we've been hearing about of the coming blue wave in Texas now for about as long as we heard about the, the, the coming red wave in Pennsylvania up until Donald Trump's win. To date, it's been the great white whale of Democratic politics, the idea of flipping Texas blue. I will say, look, the, the turnout is a sign of clear energy on the Democratic side. Again, for Democrats in Texas, that's a phenomenal number. But again, for Republicans, that also shatters a record. I, I think the other lesson from this, too, though, is, look, when we talk about the early vote, take it with a gigantic grain of salt in the future. This is one of the big lessons of the last few elections in Texas. All those reports about early votes, one thing to keep in mind, the Numbers are only counted when they do these early vote uh, release totals. They're only counted in the in the run-up to Election Day in the top 15 counties. That's what you're usually seeing in the news, uh, top 15 counties in terms of population, much more Democratic. So that's going to skew things right there. So again, look, if you're a Democrat and you just said you're going to get more than a million votes yesterday, I think you're happy. But if you're a Republican and you broke the record, you're not as sad about that either. Okay, so Victoria. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.